Hi everyone and welcome. This is um, Naturopathic Medicine Week, which is very exciting. And our very first guest of this Naturopathic Speaker Series is Linda Bailey. And I'm really excited to welcome Linda Bailey and introduce her to you. Um, she is, I would consider, a, a well a, a wise woman of naturopathy in New Zealand. And I know that you are a role model and a mentor to a huge amount of us out there. So um, Linda was one of my tutors and is the program, um, uh, clinical program leader at World Park College. So I'm really excited to invite Linda to join us and to tell us a little bit about your experience um, as a naturopath and your journey and how you see naturopathy. So thank you very much for taking the time out to chat to me today. Thank you, Sarah. I feel quite humbled by your introduction, I must say. It's true, I mean it. So did you want to start start off this, um, this uh, speaker series by just telling people about your own journey to find naturopathy and what was it about naturopathy that, that you loved that made you go from being a, a medical practitioner into coming over to the dark side. Yeah. I would call it from um, the light into the lighter. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, um, you know, I started off as a young, young woman as a nurse. And what attracted me to, about that was, I suppose, the discipline of nursing. And then I got to be appreciate the nourishment that's required as a nurse for healing. And it started to dawn on me, I guess, that I was an instrument in helping people to heal as much as all the surgery and the drugs and everything else, my, myself and how I was as a nurse. But I don't think I could put that in a constructive way. It just was a dawning, a starting to dawn on me. And then I had also been very um, interested in midwifery so from a young age. And in New Zealand, when I um, did nursing, you had to become a nurse, a registered nurse, in order to become a midwife. That's not the case now, thank goodness. But um, so it, that was my journey to midwifery. And I was interested in midwifery. And I'm sorry, this is a bit of a long story. <laughs> my journey into midwifery was my experience as a child living in England where all my, my mother's babies apart from me because I was the eldest all of my other four younger brothers and sisters were born at home all my cousins were born at home um, we all just moved into my auntie's place when she had a, a baby and it was all just integrated into our life it wasn't really anything extra special apart from the fact there was a beautiful new baby coming, but it was just part of our life as much as other parts of life, going on holiday or going to school or whatever, it was just integrated. So um, I was very interested in becoming a midwife and it started to evolve in my consciousness, I suppose, in that I was not interested in being a midwife in a hospital situation in terms of um, that that was all about abnormal birth and rules and regulations and it was nothing really about the woman um, and some may argue that with me most vociferously but but that's how I felt mm -hmm. and so um, my experience then of becoming a home birth midwife um, was the I, I suppose the awareness that that self-determination of wellness and women's health came from within. And I, as a midwife, was just an instrument in that occurring. And an important instrument, I'm not, not um, belittling the, the role, but it was the woman who was actually doing the work. And so I started to see that in terms of wellness. And so I actually, at that point in time, I had heard of natural therapies, but hadn't actually heard of naturopathy. And it was about that time that I had that awareness that we, um, I was practicing in South Canterbury as a midwife at that time, that there happened to be a three-year um, new bachelor course um, of naturopathy at Aoraki Polytech. And I could do this part time as well as practice midwifery, which was to me was the ultimate. It was wonderful. So I enrolled and I could totally see the 
the reason why naturopathy existed in, in terms of helping someone become determining, self-determining for their own health. And the naturopath being the instrument for that. So by that, I mean that um, it's a symbiotic situation in terms of the naturopath understanding what the person believes, values, and how they see their health and the naturopath sharing their knowledge with that person as appropriate to help that person become self-governing, self-determining of their own health. And, and that that takes time. So one of the things that um, is very evident in um, health services is that there isn't time. Mm. There's not time for listening. There's not time for explanation. There's not time for meeting the person where they're at. And so I think that that's something that is special for, for um, naturopathy, for naturopaths, is that we have the time, we set the time for that understanding of who that person is and, and meeting them as to where they're at. Did that change the way you practice midwifery, having been qualified as a naturopath? Or were you practicing that way anyway? I, I, I start, well, it, it's that awareness that became to... to um, that awareness during my practice as a midwife because practicing in people's homes is completely different to practicing in a hospital environment now it's not I don't want to um, just say home birth is the way and the only way and the holy way it's not true you know of course we need hospitals and of course we need obstetricians and of course we need specially trained health practitioners but there wasn't a place for a midwife, well, there was beginning to be an increasing role for a midwife to be with women in their own home and for women to dictate how they wanted things to be for them. Um, and helping women to believe and trust in their own body that they can, with all the right conditions, have healing happen. And so that, of course, is a basic tenant of naturopathy. So the two started to mirror each other. But of course, um, my love with natrop with midwifery at that time <laughs> then started to become my love of naturopathy. And after a period of time, I left midwifery and um, became full time as a naturopath once I graduated. And, and how did you practice once you'd finished working as a midwife? How, how did you practice as a naturopath? Um, well, for some times, I for some time, I should say, over a couple of years, I integrated that with different ways of practicing as a naturopath because I continued on part time midwifery, and so I worked in a health food shop. I worked in several actually. I worked um, in private practice. I relieved naturopaths while well, they went on holiday and worked in their mm -hmm. private practice. Um, I then went overseas and lived in England for a few years and practice there and I practiced in London and I practiced in Bournemouth and I did do a little bit of midwifery while I was in England as well and and then I moved to Italy and practiced naturopathy in Italy which um, when I was practicing then was highly illegal <laughs> So, um, but there, there's quite a large, the area in which I was living in Umbria was a large expat community of Australians, South Africans and English. So I had a massage table and I drove around in my little Fiat around to different people in their houses and provided all, you know, different aspects of naturopathy to those clients and as well taught English in a, um, <laughs> in a school. So um yeah that's quite an exciting time of my life and what did you like when you came back to New Zealand were there things that you learned from practicing in England and Italy that you brought back to New Zealand that were new practices or a new way of seeing naturopathy yeah I think I um let me just say I, I think me going back to England because I was born in England um, was a bit of a, a journey back to my previous life and reuniting with um, relatives and so on. But it was more about reuniting with the history in England. And so learning about the richness of the history in England and also 
it might sound really weird to bring this up, but about the burning of the witches mm. and uh, 15th, 16th century and how that really um, started off with a burying of herbalism, midwifery, mm. knowledge about oneself and the control and power that was brought over people. So for me, again, it's about that consciousness raising. And once you've become conscious, you can't turn it off. You can't pretend it doesn't happen anymore. So that just burned you know, more into my curiosity as to what happened, why, and so on. But when I was in Italy, it was a real eye-opener for me because the area I lived in was a country area, wasn't a main town. And um, everywhere I talked to, every, anyone I talked to who was Italian, they had a huge belief in natural therapies. I mean, they didn't call it natural therapies. They, I went, um, made friends with a pharmacist in the local village and I used to go and just observe. And mm. that was just a complete eye-opener to me. The pharmacist there would look at prescriptions by the doctor and just throw the prescriptions over his shoulder and then walk down the aisle and get out some dried herbs. Farmers would come in and just put their sunflowers on the, on the thing and he would give out sunflowers to people um, and tell them about the seeds to eat. So it just became such, you know, people obviously trusted and believed in what the pharmacists would tell them. And, um, and he had it as his fingertips both the medical knowledge and also natural knowledge. And so that to me again was a bit of a, um, a ripening moment in terms of um, it is important that naturopaths don't feel like they can, need to be the be all and end all for a person and to have all the answers, that it's just as important and, and actually critically important in some cases that you understand where your scope of practice begins and ends. Yeah. Do you, like, you, when you talked about the, the, having been a midwife and the evolution of midwifery, do you look at naturopathy and see, see an evolution of naturopathy? And, and, and where do you see that going? Or where do you hope it goes? Yeah, so if, if I was just to look at um, naturopathy per se, I think that naturopathy as, as science, science-based health system, has evolved. Naturopathy has been more and more marginalized. And that is really unfortunate because naturopathy, and as we know, it integrates more and more evidence. And there's a lot more evidence now than what there was 20, 30 years ago. And it, its unique position is that it um, enables people to learn about themselves so that they can be as healthy as they possibly can, which sits alongside other health professionals who are specialists in their own areas. And, you know, naturopath can talk to a person about using natural therapies to help them with aspects of their health, but also um, being alongside other health practitioners with their own specialized scope. So you can refer as appropriate. And then the client, or you know, as in health systems is often called the patient, will come back because that's that person has chosen their range of health practitioners to, to choose as they see fit. And so you see, see its role as being kind of really integrated. That, that you, it's a really important part of healthcare. It's not the be all and end all, but it has to be integrated with everything else. So people have a choice. Yeah, that's right. And, and so, you know, I think that for most people, they see their health provider as being the one person. And then there's a few add ons, mm -hmm. you know, as and when necessary. Whereas I see it a little bit more of a person to feel self-determined, self-determining or self-governing in their own health. They'll see, I, I like to go and see a naturopath for this. I like to go and see my doctor for that. I like to go and see an osteopath or a physio, or I go and have a chat to my pharmacist about that, you know, so that um, they know where to go to get what they need for their own individual health. And, so and I, in a health team, they have a health team and everyone has a part to play in that health team. Yeah, a self-selected health team. It's not, it's not prescribed for them. So 
Um, that to me would be the ideal for our society going forward. However, there's a lot of work to do to get there. <laughs> because, because naturopaths have been marginalized for so long, um, there's a lot of quite a lot of work to do to get um, society to see the, the worth in naturopaths to enable us to take our rightful place as a health practitioner, a health professional, standing alongside other health professionals, but with our own um, specialized knowledge in natural therapies. And why do you think we've been marginalized? I think because of the rise of um, oh, a variety of reasons. I mean, it's, been, it's political, societal, and so on. But I, I think that, um, you know, as time's gone on, science has been the, the one, the thing that has driven, um, you know, I mean, you can read lots of history books and learn all about, you know, what happened when they discovered penicillin. And penicillin became the drug. Yeah. And, and then it was the power and control over who owned or who could prescribe and who could give penicillin and for what reason, you know. So, so the establishment of um, selected, protected health professionals was already established. Mm. So um, traditional practices were not so valued in society. And um, I think that, you know, naturopathy has got such a rich um, knowledge and experience and history of the traditional philosophies and practices that are really can be really helpful for people in living their lives as healthfully and as well as they possibly can. And, and I don't mean that in terms of curing people, you know, or treating people. Um, because as we all know, you know, someone can come and see you who have, might have diabetes type two, who's been di that's been diagnosed, but the person themselves, their concerns, their individual concerns, is what is the the um, the work of the naturopath to help that person with their individual concerns, whilst at the same time looking at what is the root cause of this person's condition and disease. Right. So that's like, so like treat, treating the person, not the condition. Absolutely. Yeah. How did that how did that situation come about to put that person at risk for that condition, that disease in the first place? Which brings about what naturopaths need to study in order to have that breadth and depth of um, analysis and also working within their scope of practice. So before we talk about a college environment and what naturopaths learn and what you do, what you know how you work within that field, um, how would you define naturopathy to someone who has no idea? Like, I know people that will say, oh, "What do you do for a living?" You say you're a naturopath. They glaze over and they have no clue what what that means, or they think that that means you're a homeopath. So yeah. how would you define naturopathy to someone who really has no idea? Hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it takes it, it does take a person a couple of minutes to hear what a naturopath has to say because it is, is so different to what they might understand so it takes a while for it to integrate and I think um, for a naturopath um, for a person to explain what is naturopathy naturopathy essentially is about living in harmony with nature and what that means is, is that someone's not sitting out in the field, you know, going la, 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 nature is fantastic, <laughs> blah, 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 that's all I need to do. It's not that at all. It's about understanding that we are part of nature. You know, we're, we're as part of the moon and the sun and the stars and the rain and the earth and so on. And what's in the earth will affect us and what's in the water and so on. Um, and our experience as humans living on this earth will and our experience of being in the family that we're in the history of the our medical history and the, the time of the life of experience we've experienced will bring us to a certain point where um, we might need to be thinking about how can we live life more fully and be in a more wellness state 
and um, you know how can I know about how to make myself well and that's where the naturopath comes in mm. you know to me I think that that explains to a person um, you know it, it kind of connects in with their inner drive to be as well as they possibly can be So tell me, or tell tell everyone who's listening, if someone went to to college and they studied to be a naturopath, what kind of things would they be expected to learn? Mm, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, it I think it does surprise people in the depth and the breadth of knowledge that a naturopath um, needs to study in order to be a naturopath. Um, so just to look at the science subjects to start with, um, in the first and second years, um, learning about anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology, so all about normal structure and function, and then learning about disease states or condition states and how that affects the body. Um, chemistry is really important to have um, a basic understanding um, of chemistry so that you can understand biochemistry, which then leads into understanding around um, around how um, how the body works in terms of um, metabolism of um, I can't think of the word I'm just trying to think of sorry it's gone completely <laughs> that sounds great doesn't it <laughs> um, in in terms of um, and then nutrition of course mm -hmm really important um, so the chemistry biochemistry then moves on to nutrition so that um, naturopaths understand what 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 foods do we need to eat to be well and healthy and how we can adapt that to the individual person um, and what how we educate people is really important as well so an understanding of the theory of human or adult learning so that a naturopath can teach another person um, their knowledge and how they can use it. And understanding um, and knowledge of communication skills, really important. Um, <clears throat> and alongside that goes professional development. So understanding the values and beliefs, the philosophies of naturopathy, and that underpins everything within the degree program. Um, where have I got to? The other thing is that in order for naturopaths to work integratively with other health professionals, um, we need to understand because our clients um, may often come to see us who have prescribed medications. So we need to be um, understanding of pharmacology, you know, what happens, how do drugs broken down into the body, how is it metabolized, how is it excreted and so on before we even think about nutrition um, and interfere and how that may be contraindicated or precautions that are needed for prescribing any nutritional changes as nice. well as herbal medicine. So herbal medicine is another modality within naturopathy that is studied as well. Um, so in order to, for that to be prescribed, naturopaths need to understand the pharmacological um, aspects and about drugs and medications that are commonly prescribed in our society and in your you're the clinical program leader at world park college so what does that mean and and how does that work with the within the degree um so clinical practice is actually integrated into the all three years of the um, degree program so right at the very beginning as i said before is that we're learning um, about communication skills and um, clinical practice is also about professional development because you can't have one without the other so right at the very beginning it challenges students who come in to think about their own personal development so personal development means looking at their own values their own beliefs and how that may or may not enhance their interaction with their clients or how it may cause some concerns and how they might need to be thinking um, in terms of their conduction of being a, a health professional. Um, so just going back to clinical practice, um, so it's integrated into those three years and then um, so learning in that first year a set of basic communication skills and learning about um, you know, communication skills and understanding 
of, um, for example, respect and non-judgmental um, mm -hmm. and appreciation of someone's own um, ability to heal themselves. Um, so that then carries on to the second year where um, there's topics on the law, um, ethics, and understanding um, their place within the health system in New Zealand. It encompasses everything that a person has learned as a naturopath right till they get to their third year where they're spending most of the year in the clinical um, area, which is out at Well Park College's Prima Clinic, where students start off um, seeing clients. They have previously also learned in their second year how to conduct a wellness assessment, so a full top-to-toe -to -toe physical assessment. Um, and that may include if necessary for each client, a urinalysis, a screening tool for um, urinalysis, or a glucometer, use of a glucometer, so taking a finger prick and reading that, and learning how to explain the positive and negatives of those um, readings, and of course, referring appropriately um, to the required health professional for further assessment and diagnosis and treatment if necessary. So, the, um, the clinical practice is huge in terms of what students learn. Um, it is a, a, a huge um, rise in personal development because it, it really asks students to start seeing the other person in the room, which is the client, rather than concentrating on themselves and their own knowledge and what they, they need to know. Um, so those skills are learned over the year. Um, so learning to be with a client, to really listen to what they're saying, to really see the client for who they are and what their aspirations are for their health and their goals. And they have professional supervision whilst they're doing that as well, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. So, um, you know, at Well Park College, it's um, again, it's about professional development, their own personal development alongside professional development. So the professional supervision is separate to the clinics, but it, it feeds into the students' personal development. And so they might look at things like boundaries, um, boundary issues, their own values and their own beliefs and how that might, as I said before, get, into, in, get in the way of actually seeing their client um, as they really are. Um, and acceptance and being non-judgmental, all of those things that come up in everybody who's a human, um, that needs looking at, taking out and unpacking a little bit and packing back in so that we're understanding ourselves really well and who we are and what we're about as naturopaths. Cool. And, and so if someone was interested, I mean, and I appreciate that there are other colleges out there as well, but if, if someone was interested in knowing more about how to study naturopathy, what, 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 who, how could they contact you? Where would they go? <laughs> Um, yes, so um, I would say, so um, you want me to talk about different colleges? You, you yeah, ask yeah, um, yeah, so I mean, if someone wanted to contact you and find out about Well Park, then, then they could, and then we can talk about that there are yeah, other yeah. colleges out there. If I can just talk about something in a wider aspect. So my encouragement would be that anybody who's interested in naturopathy would look at a degree program, um, quite simply because that is the lowest level of education or qualification that's required to be practicing as a health practitioner health practitioner and so I would encourage that them to um, to look at a degree program because of the depth and breadth of the um, the subject content but also because when they've finished in three years time they're coming out with a qualification that's current um, one of the concerns is that the three years doesn't go quite far enough. And it's a recognition, I think, that, um, you know, when you're an independent practice, such as naturopaths are, when they're working on their own in their own clinic, that it carries with it huge responsibilities and quite a breadth and depth of knowledge of the complexity of um, the human situation and also being able to negotiate working within a, an integrated environment. Um, so... Um, to gain further clinical practice is really important for that extra year to solidify what they've um, started learning. So that's what that's a couple of things I wanted to mention. But um, secondly, I would say if I was to talk about Well Park College, um, you can always um, 
look on the Well Park College of Natural Therapies website. And on there, you'll find any um, a link to the enrollment advisor who will send out information. Um, I would also really strongly encourage anybody who's interested in naturopathy to go and have a consultation with a naturopath who's perhaps been educated in the last five years, um, because that means then you'll see somebody who is practicing with um, a degree qualification, which is that um, that means they'll get a true representation of what they're going to experience. That's that's what I'm meaning by that. Yeah. If I may. Um, and or to come and have a i a, um, sorry, a consultation with a naturopath at Prima Clinic, a naturopath is in their third year, and then they can see what happens to students and, and what they're studying, and, and they can ask lots and lots of questions of that student who will be, I'm sure, more than happy to tell them about what they've experienced and how they've experienced. And I think that, um, you know, naturopaths can come from all walks of life so and all ages too, and all stages of life. So there, we have um, students who've just left school um, and we have students who come in who are midlife, who want to change their, um, their career. We also have, um, you know, people who have maybe have children and their children are at an age where they feel like they can take on a little bit more and they can study part time. So there's a and we have people who are later in life who've decided that really they want to they see it as a kind of a service to give back to community, um, a, a way of becoming a naturopath. So there's all different varieties of ages and stages of people who would want to study naturopathy. So I would encourage anybody who's interested um, to come along. The other thing you could do is perhaps enroll in a nutrition course that's being offered um, over three Saturdays at Well Park College. So you'll get an idea of the depth of nutrition that's studied um, and can ask students taught by a naturopath. So um, yeah, you can ask questions around, around that. So there's lots of different ways you can find out more about it, but I would say at the very least that somebody would have a naturopath with a uh, consultation yeah. with a naturopath first yeah great idea and I know that there's um, South Pacific College um, is also in Auckland so Well Park and South Pacific College are the only two colleges that offer um, degrees bachelor programs they're both in Auckland and they've both got clinics and so you can go to the student clinic either so just to make that's, it clear. that's right that's yeah. right yeah that's right so yeah, to, yeah. to finish off the interview then is there one thing or is there something that you could um share that you felt that that naturopathy gave you or or the one tip that you've learned from naturopathy that you think other people would benefit from mm, that's a really good question I, I think the thing for me was um or is is remembering that I am part of nature and that I am part of everything and everything's a part of me. I know that sounds a bit trite, but it is important because it, what it does is it brings me back to, okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Um, and I'm working with nature. So, and nature has its own time and its own place and its own function. And to, for me to, to keep bringing that back to there just reinforces for me about slowing down, taking time, and understanding that I'm only human, <laughs> you know, and that's taken, that's quite a journey for me. <laughs> that's, you know, and I would say that one of the things about naturopathy is it really does bring you up face to face against yourself because you have to face yourself when you are seeing people. Um, if, you, if you've got the ability to see other people, you've got to be able to see yourself first. You don't, you can't do that until you see yourself. And when you're working with yourself, then that is such a rich reservoir in order to be able to help and see other people. So I would say that that's one of the things that naturopathy has given me. But if I can just share with you another uh, aha moment, which has happened to me recently, as recently as 2015, when I broke my arm and I um, fractured my humerus and um, falling over 
And I went, of course, to the hospital. I was assessed. Um, there was nothing they could do except put on a weight on my elbow to reduce the fracture to make sure the bone was aligned and then just to wait. And then just to wait, <laughs> you know, and, and that's it. Nature healed. I healed myself. My body healed it. You know, yeah. for me, that was another reinforcement of, you know, I, I needed to feed myself well, both in thoughts and words and um, food and lifestyle and healthy water and all the things that we talk about. But literally, my body healed itself, and which is one of the core philosophical beliefs of naturopathy, the vitalism, you know, the ability to heal itself. So that was a reinforcement for me. We just need to provide the environment so that our body, body can do that because that's the biggest problem, isn't it? I guess we, we, we provide an environment that means our body struggles to do that, even though that's what it wants to do. Yeah. So um, another role, you know, if I can talk about role of naturopathy, is, is helping people to renew, remove their obst obstacle to cure, which is pretty old-fashioned terminology, but basically means is um, providing the nutrition, the clean water, the roof over your head, the heat, the warmth, the caring, the love, and the belief to create the environment where the body is able to heal. Yeah. Mm. Simple. We're simple, but we make it complex. <laughs> well, I think that we have a lot of um, fear, you know, and um, that, you know, the body, something terrible is going to go wrong. And then that's reinforced by a diagnosis of a condition mm -hmm. or something that's happened, um, which then covers up that whole understanding and belief that, you know, when we are little, when you fall over and graze yourself, the graze heals. Mm. You know, it's truly miraculous when you think about it. But we forget about that. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Wise words. And I really, really appreciate you giving up your time to come and talk to us today. And I hope that um, people out there have got excited about naturopathy, understand a little bit more about it, and maybe even are excited enough that they're looking at possibly becoming naturopaths themselves, whether it's to be a naturopath to practice in clinical practice or just because they're interested in it. So either way, it would be great. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. You're very welcome. It was lovely to talk to you, Sarah. Thank you. Cool. All right. See, see everybody later.